previewing the 4th of July holiday and the science behind the fireworks displays that everybody sees. I'm Lee Lopez with the City of Deltona. Every summer, the 4th of July fireworks display is something that the City of Deltona puts on for its residents. Today we're going to preview the 4th of July fireworks extravaganza. My guest today, Steve Moore with the City of Deltona, he's the City's Parks and Recreation Director, and Sergeant Pat Leahy with the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Steve, 4th of July fireworks display, 4th of July fireworks extravaganza. Tell me a little bit about that. Biggest event of the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Commission has given us the money to be able to provide an extravaganza of fireworks for the residents of Deltona. I think we've been doing this now for about eight or nine years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that uh, you don't want to pass up. Uh, so it's a, it's a fun-filled day of all kinds of things. It's, not, uh, it's no charge to the residents, right? It's no, free. there's no charge for the residents, and we, uh, we just sit back and have a good time all day long. and. Uh, a little later on in the evening when it starts getting dark, that's when the fireworks start. Now, 4th of July fireworks extravaganza happens where? It happens at Dewey Boster at uh, 1200 Saxon Boulevard and in the back part where the soccer fields mm -hmm. are. We actually shoot the fireworks off from the uh, Senior League baseball field and they come across the area where the entrance is uh, so the residents can, can sit at the soccer fields and watch everything above them. You know, what time does everything start? Well, everything, well, we're going to have games, mm -hmm. we're going to have contests, we're going to do all that stuff during the course of the day. I think we're going to have about seven games for kids to enjoy, face painter, those kind of yeah. things. Um, and then the fireworks will start when it gets dark, which is about 9.15, mm -hmm. somewhere in that area. And will go on for 22 minutes. Okay. So if, for somebody to, if they want to go and make a night of it, they want to make a day of it over at the uh, extravaganza, what time should they typically get there? Well, we'll, we'll start setting up, uh, well, around 4.35 o'clock would be a good time to get there because right after that's when it starts getting really, really packed. Now, you were talking about the different games. Do the games start about the same time? We'll start the games at about 5 o'clock, and we'll go until about 8. Now, games, different age groups? What yeah, we'll have the games mm -hmm. basically for the kids. And then we'll have contests on the stage, pie eating contest, uh, watermelon eating contest, sort of a grab, stick your head in the bucket, get an apple, yeah. mm -hmm. those kind of things. So, uh, but uh, there'll be something for everybody there. And we'll have uh, bouncy houses. That's what I was going to ask. Um, we'll have bouncy houses. We'll have that kind of stuff happening as well. Okay, now that's going to be good for the younger, the younger set. How about for adults? You, uh, typically the 4th of July, we also have a concert. We do. We're, we're, we're in negotiations right now mm -hmm. with who we're going to have. Typically we've had somebody like then to now, a Deltona band. Uh, we're, we're trying to work out all the final details with mm -hmm. that now, but uh, uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a great band, I can tell you that. And the concert typically starts about what time? It starts at around 7 and goes until about 9. Okay. Um, in the past, like you said that, uh, just to kind of like think about the different types of groups, then to now. Uh, Caribbean Crew. Mm -hmm. Caribbean Crew's performed a couple years for us. Then to now has been there a couple years. Um, we've had uh, several other local groups that have performed as well. Okay. We'll have a DJ too. We'll, yeah. we'll take the DJ up until the time when the band gets set up. So mm -hmm. there'll be continuous music pretty much all day long, which will be nice. Now, somebody shows up. Uh, is, will there be like concessions or no? Well, our food, our, food our concession drink? that's out there, yeah. which is operated by the um, Deltona Youth Soccer Association, um, that'll be open, and they sell you know hamburgers, hot dogs, those mm -hmm. kind of things. But typically, what we do is we uh, we take the walkway that comes into the park from the main entrance there, and we'll, uh, we'll last year we had 18 vendors, and we had no more than two or three organizations that sold the same thing because mm -hmm. it just doesn't it's just not fair to have somebody six groups selling hot dogs yeah because somebody's not going to make make any money mm -hmm. um, 
and invest the time and, and the effort being out there on the holiday, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know have to put the money into the inventory, and the return on investment's not very well. So uh, we'll typically have about 15, 20 groups, I would imagine. We're starting to advertise that now. Actually, we have three groups that have already come in and been approved. Okay. So uh, it'll be lemonade, hamburgers, hot dogs, Italian ice, barbecue, yeah. oh, uh, wow. those type things. Mm -hmm. So it'll be it'll be good. It'll be a cost assessment of uh, all different kinds of food. Now, say somebody comes in, but they want to bring their own stuff. Like, say, they can bring a cooler with food. Uh, they can bring their cooler with some food. You know, they can make it at home. Mm -hmm. We don't want them cooking on the grass. Uh, the places where we usually use all the people that will be selling concessions, the cooking people will cook on the cement. Okay. The other people that are doing Italian ice and lemonade and popcorn, they will be on the grass. Um, but typically we do not allow people to cook and bring it in mm -hmm. uh, like you and me and we're bringing our families and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. so they can bring in uh, lawn chairs, they can bring in blankets, can they bring in like say uh, a, a Frisbee, tent? football, tents, okay. yeah, that kind of stuff. You and can they that. can set up anywhere on the soccer fields, correct? Like all the way from the pavilion going back to... Yeah, and then we'll take the first, uh, first uh, multi-purpose field and that's be where the games are. Some people sit over on the, the middle field, the football field. Mm -hmm. As far back as the other field three, which is the other multi-purpose field, uh, and but the majority of people will be um, over on field four and five, which is over by the sort of by the road, and in the middle, where in front of the stage, and uh, we get a lot of people sort of sitting on the hill as you come around the curve into the park because that's the premier spot to watch the fireworks. Okay. Now, you're telling me what they can bring, and this, Pat, I know this will kind of like cross into your area. Right. Uh, what are the things that people cannot bring into the park? No alcohol. Okay. We're not going to be allowing any type of alcohol. And, and another issue we've had from time to time at the park is outside fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked the event a number of years, and, and i got to tell you, it's one of the best I've ever seen. So there's really no need for it, but it's also a safety issue. Mm -hmm. our, our number one priority is to make sure everybody's safe. So we won't be allowing any type of fireworks, even sparklers. Okay. We want to maintain everyone's safety, mm -hmm. uh, let the professionals deal with the fireworks. Yeah. Um, and pets. We've also had some issues previously with pets. So other than service animals, yeah. we know pets allowed. Okay, now something that both you guys can speak on, this is going to be with parking mm -hmm. and with the traffic. Uh, let's start off with shuttle buses because the city will be doing shuttle buses again this year, right? Right. We'll be contracting two shuttle buses. Mm -hmm. We have a great relationship with uh, Deltona Trinity Christian. We mm -hmm. actually rent their buses for, from them, two of them. We'll be running shuttle buses from City Hall here up to Dewey Booster. Uh, and uh, we'll, the last bus will stop at about, uh, I think, about 9.30 at night. Okay. And buses, are, are they like the standard size? Just to ask, because they should be able to... They're like regular school buses that capacity. usually transports their, you know, their, their athletic teams mm -hmm. from point A to point B, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, now, once they get to the park, where will they be dropping them off? Do they drop them off, isn't it, usually it's section line, correct? Something like that? Yeah. The buses? Yeah, yeah the buses so. will be dropping them off section line. <laughs> the back gate back there. Right. Okay, the back yeah. gate. Because... The reason I'm asking about where they'll be dropping people off, that's also where we'll be picking them up. And this has to do with traffic, right. traffic control around the park. And what we had talked about earlier, Pat, that you said that there's only one way in, one way out. That's correct. Into, the, into uh, Dewey Boster as far as, like, parking and... For vehicles, yeah. yes. It's going to be off Saxon Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so give, tell me a little bit more about what people can expect as far as traffic control that night. Unfortunately, due to the size of the event, yeah. traffic and, and parking can be a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have our motor deputies out there mm -hmm. in full force directing people where to go. Uh, the city will be displaying signs uh, prior to the event explaining the traffic pattern, mm -hmm. which way they'll be routed into the park and, and outside, how to, how to exit the park. We'll also have our uh, civilian uh people out there assisting mm -hmm. with that. They'll be in uniforms. It's our COP members. Okay. So they'll be there volunteering their time to also assist with traffic. Okay. Now, when people park in Dewey Boster, because there's a very def definite area, there's the area by the retention pond near the front entrance, and right. doesn't it go like all the way close to section line right. as well? Right, it does. We, we've <clears throat> got uh, a total of about 400 spaces in the mm -hmm. park right now. Uh, we've got... Uh, about 200, actually 188 paved spots mm -hmm. 
and uh, about uh, 240 uh, grass, park. grass parking mm -hmm. in the overflow parking area. And what we'll do is we'll mark those out. We'll paint okay. those out. We'll stripe them. And then uh, with the assistance from the uh, operations department mm -hmm. and public works, there'll be uh, guys that'll be on duty that'll be directing people into parking spaces. Okay. And they'll be there on with radios so they can communicate. We can all communicate. Mm -hmm. We actually have a command post that'll be set up that we'll be able to talk to people in the park internally to be able to know if there's any issues, a lost child, mm -hmm. or, or an accident, or somebody needs to get towed, or something like that. So we'll be fully uh, able to communicate throughout the whole event. Okay, so when somebody pulls in, once they get into the park, then they look for somebody to direct them We'll to have us. some orange vests on. Mm -hmm. There'll be flashlights. They'll be waving the people down, and you know how they do it. Yeah. Pull in here. Mm -hmm. So All of our personnel will mm -hmm. be in uniform. Traffic vests as well, lights, cones. Now, one of the things I remember from the uh, past couple of years that when the event is over with, as far as the traffic patterns, mm -hmm. typically leaving the park going on to Saxon, isn't it just like one, it's a one way, go, just correct. turn right? Usually it's a right hand turn, that's okay. correct. I'm pretty sure you're probably going to do, the, I guess, the same thing again this year just it, to keep It looks that going. way, and unless there's any significant changes which we don't foresee, that'll more than likely be the way. Okay. And you had mentioned that. Uh, People, they will see, you know, the staff with the sheriff's office. Yes. Now, in the past, uh, the sheriff's office, your presence in the park, it's usually been bicycles and golf carts. Uh, what can people expect to see, like, when they go, you know, as far as, like, if they need to find somebody with the sheriff's office? Correct. We're going to have several uh, deputies on staff for the event. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll all be in uniform one way or the other. There might be a little variation of uniform, the motorman with their boots and you know a little bit different variation mm -hmm. but they should have at least uh, very identifiable uniforms um, any one of them is approachable so if there is any issue uh, they can go to any one of those uh, we, we anticipate having at least two people on bicycles mm -hmm. to be able to get through the trails and some of the other more secluded areas a little bit easier but we will have deputies on foot and on motorized vehicles as well throughout oh. the Park. Will we have golf carts like we've had in the past? We'll, we'll be getting uh, part of our responsibility, mm -hmm. of course, is to uh, pick up the patients from the buses okay. on section line. Yeah. We'll be getting some six-passenger and four-passenger mm -hmm. golf carts, and then we'll be getting them six golf carts okay. as Great. well. So we'll be fully golf carted. Mm -hmm. and some of the people that, have, uh, that need a little assistance, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be running them from section line to take okay. the bus. Mm -hmm. And we'll be bringing them to wherever they need to go. And uh, the loss of the fire department will have a standby unit. Okay. And then they also have a bike team as well for e with EMTs. Okay. So in case there's any heat stroke or anybody gets sick, mm -hmm. anybody gets hurt, then the EMTs are right there to be able to react as well as the motor guys on the motorcycles as well. So it's, it's a joint effort. It's mm -hmm. a team-type function. And mm -hmm. everybody's been doing this now for a while. So we do have some issues that come up, mm -hmm. but between the two of us, we're able to handle pretty much everything that comes about. Right. And speaking of, if there is an emergency, somebody has a lost child or somebody, you know, they need some help, what typically should they do? What's the process? Find, find a deputy immediately. Okay. Um, every time I've worked the event, that's usually one of the biggest concerns. A mm -hmm. uh, child separated from a parent for a short period of time or a loved one or family member can't find uh, somebody that they maybe came to the park with, um, what we'd recommend is have a plan, mm -hmm. have, a, have a meeting point, especially if it's a child, in case you do get separated from your loved one, mm -hmm. have, have a meeting area where they could go. Uh, the other thing with technology today, which would be a great idea, most people have a smartphone where they've got the capability of taking a photograph. If you, ha if you don't have a smartphone that has that capability, maybe a digital camera, take a picture of everyone that you were going to the park with. That way, okay. in the event that you do get separated, mm -hmm. you can show a deputy, this is exactly who it is that we can't find right now. So it makes mm -hmm. it easier for us to go ahead and put the word out. We could, we could disseminate that picture to all the deputies who are working on, on the scene that night and hopefully get reunited with that loved one quickly. Yeah, that was something I hadn't thought about. You take a photo beforehand, that way you have Absolutely. it on hand you instead of trying to describe what somebody looks like. Because after a while, it's like... You know how many people are wearing like you know blue shirts and right. you know red you know red shorts. Absolutely. It's like, so, we uh, we also mm -hmm. do a little information booth. Oh, a little okay. information tell me, yeah, tent. Tell me about this with uh, lost and found. Yeah, it's usually located right behind the stage. Okay, 
and uh, you're, you're going to be sort of, your group's mm-hmm. going to be in that area as well, mm-hmm. uh, filming everything. So if anybody does get lost, we usually take them over there. And then we'll make an announcement on the stage, in, you know, interrupt the music, mm-hmm. whatever's going on. Hey, we've got a child that's four years old wearing a yellow shirt and yes. red, white, and blue pants or mm-hmm. whatever, you know. And then we, people know we, we, that's one of the, the greatest fears of not being able to find somebody. So uh, we've all dealt with this before. Mm-hmm. Now, this year, hopefully, we'll be able to get a, a PA system for the park. Okay. So we've, we've, we've thrown that in the budget. Mm-hmm. And uh, usually uh, uh, everybody knows that sometime during the event, and we do have, like, you know, thousands of people. I think last year uh, you all estimated between fifteen and 20,000 people that do attend that event. Yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah, what are was, we looking at as far as an attendance? Well, typically the, the, the Wichita County Sheriff's Office mm-hmm. helps us with that. The guys at the gate are a good estimator of the crowd, mm-hmm. you know, right. and they, they, they kind of keep track of it for us. Plus, they know how many parking spaces are in there. And so if you have 400 spots and you get two or three people to a car, that's 1,200. We usually fill that park two or three times during the day. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have signs, message boards out there on the main arterial roads to let people know, hey, the park is full. Try to find another place to park. Oh, or that's good. use the shuttle bus. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people have not been using that. And, mm-hmm. you know, the numbers tell the story. Yeah. If not too many people are using shuttle buses and we're paying money f- mm-hmm. to do that because we're renting those from Trinity, then um, we may, that may not be available as far as for funding next year. Mm-hmm. So uh, the numbers tell the story. So if we can get good use on shuttle buses, that, that helps us out. It helps them out, too. Because yeah, that was something I didn't realize that you guys were doing, that giving people advance notice that, okay, the parking lot is full, you know, recommending that you either find satellite parking, you know, close by, or you take the shuttle bus from City Hall. That way you don't have to worry about getting caught in the traffic right. coming out. Now... When everything is all said and done, and after the last uh, bottle rocket and firework has gone off, uh, the way that people will be leaving, going out that single, well, vehicle traffic, let me put it like that, because right. won't section, will section line be open for people to walk out? Generally, we open that for, mm-hmm. for people to and and that's also where the shuttle, on foot. That's where the shuttle buses will be picking, picking them up? up? That's right. Yes. And that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. why we want to have one way in and one way out. Right. Is because we don't want to mix the vehicles mm-hmm. with the pedestrians. That's not a good mix. So, so now, because I want to get back to the section line exit, but the primary exit, what you had mentioned to me before, that there is a waiting period for the vehicles. Go ahead and explain it to me a little bit more. Correct. Uh, again, safety being paramount, mm-hmm. we do have a lot of foot traffic. Yeah. So we'll typically hold the vehicle traffic mm-hmm. until we flush the pedestrians out who are on foot. Mm-hmm. We get them clear before we start allowing vehicles to, to start exiting the park. Okay, so usually, th- what is that about, like a 10 to 15 minute? 20 uh, minutes. 20 minutes about or 20 so. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, depending on the numbers mm-hmm. of people, um, it, it could take upwards of 20 minutes. Yes, yeah, so that way it gives the people who are watching the program, it gives them a little bit more of a realistic idea. Okay, when everything's all said and done, you get in your car, you're not going to be leaving right away. Right. You know, you need to allow for, you know, like you said, the foot traffic yes. to leave. Now, with section line, because that is going to be specifically for foot traffic, but also for the shuttle buses, is there like a... How will that? How does the sh- how do the shuttle buses work with the traffic? I mean, is there's a specific route? That well, the they shuttle get, buses the, the, mo- the motor uh, deputies usually escort them in Correct. and escort them out. Okay, so they have they have uh, a complete access with with, mm-hmm. with the motor guys there, and that that helps out. So people see the motors coming by, and mm-hmm. then they they move to the sides of the road. Okay, unfortunately, th- because this event is so big. Parking in the neighborhoods is like all over the place, and uh, and okay. even the, the, uh, Our Lady of the Lakes uh, 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 Catholic Church yeah. over there on Maximilian, mm-hmm. uh, you can park over there for for a charge of five dollars right. mm-hmm. per car, and the and the deputies go over there too and kind of have to pay attention to what's going on mm-hmm. over there too because right. they need to know if that if that's full because then that puts more of an impact on them being able to do their job. And people actually put cones and stuff in their yard, trying yeah. to discourage parking. Right. So mm-hmm. it is it, it is a cooperation of Paramount because mm-hmm. safety is the issue. The next part of our program, we're going to take a tour of a fireworks factory to see how they actually put the boom in the fireworks that we're going to be watching. And this is what puts the boom in a lot of commercial fireworks displays. Hi, I am speaking with Andy Nichols with Orlando Special Effects. 
Andy has been in the fireworks business for more than 35 years, doing fireworks displays here in Orlando and around the world. So Andy, that is a commercial grade firework. Uh, tell me something about it. Um, well, basically in commercial fireworks, uh, large displays that you would see on the 4th of July and New mm -hmm. Year's, um, the smallest shell we typically shoot is two and a half to three inch. This is a five inch shell, mm -hmm. um, determined by its diameter. Okay. Uh, we shoot uh, up to 12 inch diameter shells for displays, um, more typically eight inch, but you can yeah. shoot up to 10 and 12 inch shells. Um, this is a typical shell made in China, mm -hmm. and this is typically what you've seen in a lot of large displays that create that round ball pattern effect. Okay. okay. Um, I have a cross section of yeah, one over here. Yeah, as I said, that looks rather innocuous. You see it and it's like, okay, what makes it go boom? Right, right. And this is... Uh, boom in colors. So this is a cross section of mm -hmm. what that fireworks shell would look like inside. Um, this is inert, but it is um, an actual depiction of what it would be inside. Okay. Basically you have black powder, which is your lift charge, and these shoot out of a mortar or a tube, just like a cannonball. Okay. okay? And then the bottom here is a time delayed fuse, so when the lift charge fires and shoots the shell into the air, this time delay is burning slowly as it goes up. Once the fuse reaches the center of the shell, that's your burst charge, and it basically breaks the shell, spits all the stars or components mm -hmm. into the air, and lights them at the same time, and that gives you the, the different effect. The other mm -hmm. style of, of uh, shells uh -huh. is a cylinder style or an Italian style shell. Okay. So in, in this kind of a configuration, you can do other multi-break effects and other variety effects that you can't necessarily get out of a, a round shell. Mm -hmm. This would be a three inch shell. Um, this one would be known as a paw boom and it would break twice where it would go up the stars would break in color and then a mm -hmm. couple moments later you'd have a bottom shot or a salute or a report that would go boom and that's where how a lot of the noise is created. Mm -hmm. uh, in a bigger depiction you'd have a multi-break canister shell like this. This is an Italian style shell construction. Again, you may see a few of these in a display. Yeah. Uh, not typically. A lot of the times you'll see more of these in competitions and stuff like uh -huh. that. Um, but you can do a variety of effects in this that you mm -hmm. can't do in a round shell. Mm -hmm. And the cross section of that shell would look something like this. Okay, now what are all these different parts? This is really interesting looking. You have balls you have squares you have little balls you have cylinders right uh what is you know what are these well we call we call the colors or effects stars okay okay and it could be a round star like this which is rolled mm -hmm. or it could be a cut star like this which is actually put into like a cookie pan and diced into squares and let dry mm -hmm. and then the inserts like this might be whistles or fountains or tabillions mm -hmm. um, and, or little mini salutes or crackers and then the, the bottom here this represents a big um, pile of flash powder which would give you a really loud boom how this shell would work out is when you light the fuse it comes out of the shell and it's a compartment shell so it would break off in different time intervals uh, the top shell here is a gold spider web then it would break into a gold willow then break into red, white, and blue, then uh, break into what would be a whistling turbillion. So these mm -hmm. whistle and spin with sparks okay. to what then we call a bottom shot or a really loud boom to end the shell. Um, these are a lot more artwork. And like I said, typically you won't see a lot of these shells. Mm -hmm. uh, a shell like this should be showcased. You wouldn't want to shoot other shells around it because you'd want to show the art and that it was one yeah. shell and broke, 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 mm -hmm. rather than do what we might call Chinese carpet bombing like they do in finales and you just got a cluster of color. Yeah. That would kind of take away from what we've actually done here. Mm -hmm. But you know, in a, t in a finale you'd have this maybe in a three inch and you mm -hmm. might shoot a thousand of them for a finale or something okay. like that. Now with that five inch shell, with the difference looking at the way that they're built, okay, the five inch shell looked pretty simple, you know, where you had like three layers. Mm -hmm. So obviously that goes off fairly quickly, it goes kaboom and then... And it's done. Now right. with this, how, okay, with all the different compartments, with all the different parts to it, how right. long would it take this, you know, shell right. to go off right. where you see everything? Yeah, a shell like that, a typical area when it breaks, you get the effect for, you know, two or three seconds. So this is going to kind of do the same thing, but it's going to do it four times. Um, because this is going to burn for a couple seconds, this will mm -hmm. burn for a couple seconds, and then the flash is just a boom, it's over pretty quick. So yeah, a shell like this might take eight or nine seconds to completely mm -hmm. function in the sky where a shell like this is gonna be gone in about three seconds. Now, looking at the different shapes and the sizes, and you mentioned that's a star and that's a cut star. Now, when I look at a commercial fireworks display and you see, and you described like a golden willow and mm -hmm. another one's a spider web, how are those, 
or rather, I guess, how do these how are these components put together so they give you that different design or that different pattern when they blow up? It, it's it's the it's the chemical composition used to make the stars. Mm -hmm. You know, they use barium for for bariums and greens uh, or, or copper for greens. Um, aluminum is flash. It's gold willows and our charcoals mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Silvers are aluminum or titanium. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on the binders and what you do, you can control the rate of burn, the amount of color it puts out, um, or if it's like a strobe, you know, it's a flicker on, yeah. off, on, off. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing like a strobe is that that pyrotechnic comp is layered on the star and it's burning the whole time, but it only emits light in between. You know, typically uh, an average show on the 4th of July in these days usually has about a $20,000 budget mm -hmm. and that show will probably last around 15 minutes. Now when you get into 20 and 30 minute shows, then mm -hmm. obviously the budget's going to go up. And then if you choreograph to music, um, they're going to spend even, even more. And you know, for like, what's it cost? Mm -hmm. Well, typically a choreograph show to music on the 4th of July is about $2,500 a minute, give mm -hmm. or take, okay. okay? So, you know, if you want to, if you want a 10 minute show choreographed to music on the 4th of July, it's going to be about 20 to $25,000. And with that type of a price tag, what would you be looking at as far as the number of shows? And I know it'll vary depending on what they want. It, it does, it, it, it does vary. Mm -hmm. But you know, on average, I would say for a 20 minute show, um, you probably have about twelve to fourteen hundred shells in it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to cover. You know, if every shell, you know, approximately lasts three seconds, yeah. you know, short of multi-break shells, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be able to get um, about, you know, fifteen shells a minute to cover a minute of time. Mm -hmm. And the way I was taught to do it, you know, and everybody's different. You can shoot a shell, let it go up, break, and go out. Mm -hmm. Wait, beat, shoot another shell. And that's kind of boring. Yeah. To me, once you shoot a fireworks display, there's always something burning in the air. Now mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that there's always a shell breaking, but that means there's at least a, a gold flitter tail or a spark or something, and mm -hmm. the next shell's on its way and it's breaking. And you'll build the pace and build it up, maybe do a fake finale in the middle of it, yeah. slow it down a little bit, and then build it back up, and then mm -hmm. finish really strong with your finale. <laughs> Typically, most fireworks displays are kind of shot that way. You'd mentioned that there was this one really elaborate firework that was used in competition that you said it had like 24 72 break 70, rondel yeah, yeah. 72 well, rondel was an italian style yeah. shell this is five inch diameter that shell was 12 inch diameter it was approximately three feet tall and weighed 100 pounds okay mm -hmm. uh, those kind of shells it probably took him well over a month and a half to build it now not eight hours a day every day yeah. but over the course of six to eight weeks mm -hmm. making all the components and then building the shell pasting the spiking and prepping it um, a shell like that's hard to put a value on it, mm -hmm. but honestly, if you were to pay for a shell like that, it might be $1,500 yeah. for one shell. You can import 12-inch diameter mm -hmm. shells in round shell construction that are $600 a piece. It's not uncommon, but it depends on the size of the shells. Mm -hmm. What are the stars going to do? Are they going to change color? Are they going to yeah. break? You know, is there another break? Mm -hmm. Is there a center pistol? Is there a pedal on the side? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of varieties and things that add to the cost and the manufacturer and the time it takes to build a fireworks show. Fireworks, they're still made by hand, correct? Yes. Okay. There's, there are some sh machines that do a little bit of the spiking or the stringing and some machines that will do some of the pasting. Mm -hmm. They have been around for about eight, maybe 10 years. Um, they're not common, common practice, but there are companies that use them and they'll only paste a round shell. Mm -hmm. All the cylinder type shells are all handmade. The components are all handmade. And this is one of the few industries that is not automated and it may never be it's slowly getting there in certain mm -hmm. functions and maybe with some of the specialized indoor pyrotechnics and stuff like that so they can really control the size of the stars mm -hmm. and how high they go and how long they're going to burn but overall now it's just very labor intensive very crafty oriented 